Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Glidden. I am the Vice President of the Minneapolis City Council, and today I am chairing our meeting as our Council President is ill, and we wish her well. We often begin our meetings with special presentations to honor events, uh, people, places, and today we are very honored to have with us Superintendent Jane Miller of the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board. And uh, we have a special resolution that uh, we wanted to present to her, um, honoring her for her years of service to the Minneapolis Park and Recreation uh, Department. And I just want to say one quick thing before I pass it over to my colleague, uh, Lisa uh, Goodman, who will read the resolution and probably have some of her own comments, and then uh, we'll see if uh, Superintendent Miller would like to say anything. But I just wanted to say a personal thank you to, to Jane. Um, we really have been well served as a whole city by uh, your work for the Park Board. I've always felt like you were reliable, you were someone I could reach out to, but also you were someone who was forward thinking willing to change and looking for the new thing to make sure that the park and recreation and all the services therein were doing the best that we could to preserve that legacy and serve the residents of Minneapolis. And I just think back just a few days ago when we had the budget presentation of the park board and uh, we heard about some of the things that you are doing with um, analyzing new ways to think about capital investments using equity criteria and as I said at that time, um, nobody else is doing this work. It's really groundbreaking work and it was done under your leadership, but that's just one thing. So I just wanted to say my personal thank you. I'm going to hand it over to Councilmember Goodman. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice President. I remember when I met you like it was yesterday um, because I didn't have a great relationship with the previous superintendent and I was very skeptical about what was going on. And uh, you had invited me over to your house and I thought I would challenge you a little and I said, can I bring my dog to your house? <laughs> which is kind of a gutsy thing to say. And you said, I would love that. And I did bring my dog to your house and she ran all over the place and she loved it. And I knew at that moment you were willing to work with people where they were at. You were willing to accept the fact that everyone had a different opinion about what was going on in the city and parks and you were willing to understand that point of view and try to bring out the best in each individual people, each individual person that you worked with. And I really very much appreciated that. And I think that was the beginning of the respect that I grew to have for you over this period of time that you've worked on the park managing this entire park system. I remember when you were standing in front of that dais telling us about the multi-million dollar problem that the park system had and I was sitting up here thinking, oh my God, why hasn't anyone described it that way before? We don't really need to have a referendum to talk about whether or not we need to fully fund parks. The public have told us what their opinion is of parks and we need to fully fund parks. And that was what caused me to go talk to Council President Johnson and others about could we work out a deal that acknowledges the importance of our parks and acknowledges the gutsy leadership of a relatively new park superintendent in saying, I've made some changes and I need you to invest in the system and I need you to believe in me and my ability to do it. And that's how we got to know each other so well. And so, um, as you might imagine, like for many people, it was an absolute shock uh, that, um, you had to make the very difficult decision to leave Minneapolis. And it uh, breaks my heart, as you know, uh, for that to happen. But I am super excited for you going forward. Any city that will have you uh, will be very lucky as a result. And I hope I'll have the opportunity to come to Pittsburgh. I probably will bring my dog. And we can uh, check out the dog parks in Pittsburgh together. And maybe I can even help you build some more dog parks in Pittsburgh, too. So with that, I'm going to read the honorary resolution that uh, Councilmember Glidden is holding, honoring Jane Miller for her years of service to the Minneapolis Park and Recreation District, whereas Jane was appointed superintendent of the Park District in November 2010 and has served with great distinction over the past seven years, bringing heightened professionalism, innovation, and greater financial transparency to our nationally acclaimed park system. And whereas her tenure, the Park District served and launched several initiatives to improve service 
delivery, build, nurture, and sustain community relationships, which has resulted in acquiring and developing additional riverfront land, opening North America's first natural swimming pool at Weber Park, construction of the first indoor swimming pool at the Phillips Community Center, which most people thought could never get done, construction of the Minneapolis Sculpture Garden, and significant improvements in the Worth Regional Park and trails around the City of Lakes. And whereas the pinnacle of her work was her leadership in securing the successful passage of the 20, uh, in 2016 of the historic 20-year neighborhood park plan, which provides an additional $11 million each year during that period to address maintenance, repairs, and investments in the 160 neighborhood parks within the system that enhance the overall quality of life enjoyed, enjoyed by all residents and guests. And whereas Jane Miller has been a true champion of the Park District and a passionate advocate for its many positive contributions to the city, a visionary leader has, who has built partnerships throughout the community to advance the district's mission of providing places and recreational opportunities for all people to get gather, celebrate, contemplate, and engage in activities that promote health, well-being, community, and the environment. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City of Minneapolis and the City Council that the Mayor and City Council hereby extend our most sincere thanks and appreciation to Superintendent Jane Miller for her vision, leadership, and advocacy during her tenure with the Minneapolis Park and Recreation District and offer our best wishes for continued success in your new adventures. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Thank Thanks. Thank you, Council uh, Member Glidden and, and um, Goodman. It's uh, Lisa. Okay, Lisa. And thank you, Council. Um, I think anyone who knows me knows how much I care about what we do as park professionals um, and how much I cherish Minneapolis and the park system here. Um, and I think most residents recognize what a unique city we have because of the parks we have here. I know people live here because of our park system. And I've been very proud to do the work that I've done since I've been here to strengthen our organization internally, to build relationships with the millions of partners we have across the city, and to really make the park system really the best system for all residents of Minneapolis. <coughs> Um, I like to talk about, you know, I do, I talk a lot around the country about the work that we do. And I, you know, one of the things that Minneapolis, just like the rest of the country, is in a unique time right now. And one of the things I think that makes it more challenging in Minneapolis is, I'm sure many people know, in 1950, 98% of the population of Minneapolis was white. In the rest of the country, it was just over 89%. And by 2020, in the rest of the country, 61% of the country is going to be white, and yet in Minneapolis, it's going to be just over 50%. So we were more white than the rest of the country, and we are going to be more diverse than the rest of the country in less than two years. And so the speed at which things have changed in Minneapolis has been much greater than in the rest of the country. And so the need for us as a city to be responsive to that change is even more urgent, but it also is more challenging because of the, the dynamic amount of change that is happening in such a short period of time. And I am really proud that we did a lot of really hard internal work. The staff that are here know that, that I asked them to do the first three years I was here. And I know how hard that was in the organization. But it set us up to do the great work we've done really in the last three and four years to get the funding we need, to make the changes we need, to do cutting edge work on racial and economic equity. And I'm really proud of that. And I know the staff is incredibly proud of that. It showed when we hosted President Obama in 2014. And it showed when we hosted the International Park Conference just this summer. And the response from people all over the world for what we're doing in Minneapolis you all know was amazing. And so I hope 
that the new board will continue the legacy and continue the great work that we've done um, because we are set up in the organization in such a great position. We are in the most solid financial footing we've been in decades. Thank you to City Council. Thank you. So it's an honor to be here. It's really very bittersweet sweet for me to be leaving, but I am incredibly proud of the work that we have done as an organization to strengthen the city through the work we do in Parks and Recreation. So thank you again. And um, I'll be around for a while, and I look forward to using the rest of the time that I'm here to, to say goodbye, grieve the loss of Minneapolis, but also prepare myself for my next adventure. And, and the other thing I've told my staff is, you know, one of the things Pittsburgh keeps asking me is, okay, how do you be number one? <laughs> so, so look out, Minneapolis. <laughs> thank you. As we're changing, changing out a little bit here, I'm asking my colleague, Councilmember Cam Gordon, and then members of the Minneapolis Department of Health to uh, join me here. We are now recognizing the 150 year anniversary of the Minneapolis Health Department. So folks can come, they can stand on either side of, so people, some come on this side over here, Come on over, and we'll just get ourselves situated, so take a breath. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's my honor to be here. I think I've been chosen because the council president isn't here, and I've also had the privilege of serving on the health committee since I was first elected, and I'm currently chair. And um, it's the end of the 150th anniversary year, I guess, and so we figured before it's all over, we better do something formal and official. Uh, the, the health department was actually started um, very early in the city's history and has a rich and long history of involvement. I think at the beginning, uh, the health department had to take on many things, including um, trash removal, inspections of water, and actually operated the general hospital that was here in the city. Over the course of 150 years, many things have changed, but um, not the high quality of the health department. I confess I wasn't here when it started, so I don't really know all the staff, but it's really been my privilege uh, to be here now in these last 12 years and see an amazing department and all that they can do for the city. Um, we have some of the most incredibly innovative staff uh, and we, um, with a can-do attitude and a recognition that health is key to the success of our city, the individual health of all the people in our city, and also the general health of the city in terms of the air and the water and what we have going on here. Um, I think now it's popular to say that there's health in all policies, but I think the health department has gotten that for a very, very long time. We, we have a lengthy resolution that was written, um, and I encourage everybody to um, look at it online, study it carefully, and see all the details that are in here. I think one of the things that's mentioned in here is how often the, our health department has been recognized nationally for some of the innovative things that it's done. Um, and I just want to mention a couple. Uh, we have our Green Business Program, which has been recognized nationally. The Robert Woods Johnson Foundation has recognized uh, our health department as one of our culture of health communities. Um, we've been recognized nationally for our Youth Violence Prevention Program and, and, and for the first Somali language food safety course and many other things. And there's lots of things listed in this resolution, but um, maybe lucky for us. Um, I've been provided an abbreviated version and I want to read some of the highlights of the resolution and then give an opportunity for anybody else who wants to to speak. This is a resolution recognizing the 150 year anniversary of the Minneapolis Health Department. Whereas the Minneapolis Board of Health was formed in 1867 immediately following the incorporation of the city of Minneapolis and the Minneapolis Health Department is one of 10 departments established in the city charter.
And whereas Minneapolis has an innovative and skilled urban health department, which is transforming public health for the 21st century, and the department has proven to be a leader in national public health. And whereas the Minneapolis Health Department is nationally accredited, a first responder department for the city during an emergency, a leader in advocating for local and state public health policy changes, a successful recipient of public and private grant funding to augment city support of its work, and a partner in community engagement efforts to enhance the public health infrastructure for the City of Minneapolis. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Minneapolis that 2017 celebrates the first 150 years of the Minneapolis Health Department, which has helped the city face significant challenges accomplished important milestones, received local and national recognition by continually promoting healthy lives, healthy equity, and healthy environments, and turns toward the next 150 years of public health leadership, health promotion, and innovation so that all people in Minneapolis have equal opportunity to prosper and be healthy. Cue applause. <laughs> Well, that's what I had for the resolution, and I'm wondering if anybody from the health department wants to say anything. Um, so I'm Gretchen Musicant. I'm the commissioner of health. Um, been here for about the same dozen years as commissioner, um, as uh, Cam has been uh, connected to our work. And it's really a privilege to be here at this um, perhaps midpoint in our career, uh, our, our, our history. Um, it's hard to think past 150 years future, but um, really uh, exciting to think about how embedded the notion of health was from the very beginning. And to be working here now and seeing that health really is um, something that the whole enterprise is invested in and involved in and that the health department can be at the, the kind of fulcrum of that, even as we listen to the resolution for um, Jane, uh, it, we mentioned health in there. And so um, to be part of a city and to help leverage all those resources in the direction of health for all our people and for our environment, I think is a great privilege. And so thank you for helping us recognize how far we have come and, and um, projecting us out into the future. Thank you. And I think that's everything. Does anybody else wants to say anything? Thanks for being here. Um, calling to order the regular meeting of the Minneapolis City Council and the clerk will call the roll, please. Council Member Goodman. Present. Fry. Here. Palmasano. Present. Gordon. Here. Cano is absent. Reich. Present. 
Bender. Here. Yang. Here. Johnson. Here. Quincy. Here. Warsami is absent. President Johnson is absent. Council Vice President Blitton. Here. There are 10 members present. All right, thank you. Uh, next, we have adoption of the agenda, and I don't think that we have any uh, amendments that have been prepared, but any, uh, so if there are no motions to amend the agenda, I need a motion to approve. Move to amend or adopt. Second. All right, that's been moved and seconded. All in approval say aye. 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 Opposed. Next, we have acceptance of the minutes of the regular meeting of November 17th, 2017, and the adjourned session held November 29th, 2017. Move acceptance. Second. Uh, all in approval, say aye. 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 Opposed? And next, we have referral petitions, communications, and reports of the city officers to the proper committees and departments. Uh, Move approval. Motion? All right. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in approval, say aye. 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 Opposed? And next, we are turned to the reports of standing committee. The first committee is the committee of the chair, uh, committee of the whole, and I have asked council member Andrew Johnson, who uh, chairs the subcommittee within that, to give the report, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. We are bringing three items forward today on the report. One's an amendment to the municipal minimum wage ordinance. Uh, the second is a race and equity division ordinance. And the third is a racial equity steering committee and community advisory committee. I'll go ahead and move that report. All right, that has been uh, moved. Any discussion on those items? Not seeing any, so I will add myself to uh, make a comment on items two and uh, I guess a little bit on item three. Uh, with this action here that we are taking, we are formalizing work that has now been happening and building in the city for some time around uh, race and equity. Um, the ordinance, I think, helps us sharpen that focus, um, creates permanency to the work, which must be long-term work, and also includes some critical accountability measures. Uh, how do we ensure that we are actually accomplishing the results we say we want instead of just continuing with rhetoric? So I think that also ends up being some critical parts uh, to this ordinance. Um, I want to thank just a, a, a large number of city staff um, who have been uh, committed to this work, who have been creative with this work, and who, who honestly have also been frustrated that we don't have a mechanism within the city to synchronize what we are doing and translate that into more tangible results and progress. Um, I think that this is one piece of uh, that translation. Another piece, quite honestly, will be how do we ensure that we have the proper resources and the model within the city to, to complete that translation of intent into results. Um, and finally, I wanna thank uh, a large number of community members um, who honestly have pressed for this, maybe without saying we want an ordinance, but certainly have pressed for this for, for decades. Uh, you can go back in the history books and um, see uh, the same things that we're talking about in this ordinance um, being discussed, being demanded, being requested, whatever adjective you want to use, by community members who are feeling like the city must do a better job in serving everyone, and in particular serving um, uh, black and brown residents, not just white residents. So, uh, so thank you to my colleagues, and the clerk will call the roll, and the committee the whole report. Council Member Goodman. I, I'm, I'm having some trouble with my speaker management. I may need to go out and in a bit. Is there someone else in line? Cam Gordon, Council Member Gordon. Well, thank you very much. I just wanted to make a few comments because I think it's important that we um, highlight the potential significance of these actions. Also express my gratitude to Council Vice President for bringing this forward. Uh, at this time, I, I think it's important that we're taking this action now, so we're teeing things up for the next term. Um, creating the uh, race and equity division is one of the things that we're doing um, with this vote, 
And I think that's significant. We're embedding that division in ordinance. So to take that away can't just be some, some kind of budget move in the future and eliminating staff. We're now saying this is important and valuable to us as a city. I think we're doing that in response to some of the most significant and deepest problems that we have in our city in terms of the racial disparities that we have been trying to, I think, grapple with more earnestly in the last four years than we have been uh, probably for decades in the city. But still, we see persistent disparities in income, in wealth, in housing, in health, in education. And we're recognizing that we need to um, do more to address these as we're moving forward into the future. Um, I'm also delighted that we're now putting ourselves on record, uh, establishing it as a city entity, the uh, Racial Equity Steering Committee. This is something that was forming anybody. Anyway, now we formalize that and charge them with drafting a racial equity action plan that will be approved by the city council and adopted so that we can now take this work and make it more intentional, more transparent, and be held more accountable to it. Uh, and the third thing I want people to recognize that we're doing is we're creating a racial equity community advisory committee. And this will be a community advisory committee that will be standing. Um, people can apply to be on it through the open appointments process, and it will be there to advise um, the City Council, uh, certainly our internal steering committee writing that action plan for the development of that, but also then on into the future. And I think this is really key that we do a better job of connecting um, to the community and engaging them in this. Uh, that group will also be charged with reporting annually to the Council, but also doing an evaluation to the community and a report out to the community about just how well the City's doing uh, um, addressing these problems and grappling with this and implementing its action plan. So they look like small things. It's kind of government bureaucratic things, creating divisions and shuffling things around. But quite honestly, these are the little steps that we take uh, that I think yield the big results in the end if we stay on them and keep um, pushing and utilize them for the future. And um, I know that Council Member Glidden won't be um, on the Council. Uh, next term to help us do these, but I hope that um, she'll be outside uh, and keeping an eye on us. And I'll be here and I commit to her and to all of you to do what I can to make sure that these actions bear greater results in the future. Council Member Bender. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to briefly thank you, Council Vice President, for your leadership on this. And I think if you look back of the 12 years of your time in public office, there are so many legacies that you are leaving our city but maybe the deepest and most profound is the way that you have made sure that the city of Minneapolis and every organization you've been a part of as a council member centers race equity in the work. And this is but one example of the way that you have set us up into the future to ensure that race equity continues to be a priority, a center of our work and integrated into everything we do. The clerk, the clerk will call, I don't see anyone else. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are 10 ayes. <coughs> um, next, we have Community Development and Regulatory Services. Councilmember Goodman. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice President. The Community Development and Regulatory Services is bringing 23 items forward for approval this morning. There are a number of land sales as well as new licenses, uh, business licenses for a number of different businesses. I also just want to note uh, we will be allocating um, about a half a million dollars in capital money for the Emergency Solutions Grant Capital Funding Program and item number 13 and refinancing for long-term preservation, two projects, one the Albright townhomes and the other the Riverside homes. Both of those items will also receive entitlement bonds uh, in front of us at the next CD meeting on Tuesday. Um, I do wanna note for those interested, we in item number 22, we're carrying forward our tax exempt housing revenue bond entitlement authority, uh, and then hoping there will be entitlement authority moving forward in 2018. That item will be briefed at the CD meeting on Tuesday. We'll get an update about where we're at with federal uh, legislation on that topic. And then lastly, and perhaps most notably, item number 23 is the rental license revocation of all licenses currently held by Steve Friends. And the committee did unanimously vote 
to revoke those licenses um, effective immediately. With that, I'll move items one through 23 for approval this morning. Thank you. Um, anyone like to comment or uh, pull off any item? Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a brief comment on item number eight. Why don't you go ahead, please? Thank you. So uh, this is a liquor license for the new hotel in my ward on Lake Street. I just wanted to make a brief comment. Um, there have been some communication from constituents, most of whom live right there down the residential block um, from a new hotel that is situated on Lake Street. Um, so folks are obviously engaged in this big change uh, on their block. Um, so I wanted to say, thank staff and just note that um, all of the concerns that we have heard back from constituents have been addressed by staff either in zoning um, as part of the land use approvals that took place, I think over a year ago. Um, staff has been inspecting the site and making sure that the site is in compliance with all of the land use applications. And then as part of this liquor license, there were a few things that were worked out, including how the valet parking and drop off is going to occur and where the valet um, cars will be taken. So the project team has made some changes in response to feedback from neighbors. One unresolved item is a, about a fence in the back. Um, that is a land use issue that we'll be able to take up next year. The project team has been willing to come back and ask for a variance that they will need to build a higher fence than is allowed as of right. So I'll be continuing to um, be in touch with staff and neighbors on the project team to work out all of these final details um, as the hotel um, starts operation. Thank you. All right, I'm not seeing any further comments, so the clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Bright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are 10 ayes. Thank you. Next, we have health, environment, and community engagement with uh, chair of that committee, Councilmember Gordon. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The Health, Environment, and Community Engagement Committee is bringing forward six items for consideration today. The first is approving appointments to the Minneapolis Community Environmental Advisory Commission, or SEAC. Uh, second is uh, approving the next round of appointments for the Homegrown Minneapolis Food Council. Uh, that also includes waiving a residency requirement for Alyssa Banks. Uh, the third item is authorizing acceptance of a grant of $90,000 from the Minnesota Department of Public Safety. Um, this is for our Inspiring Youth um, Program, Early Intervention Program for Youth uh, and Young People at Risk for Involvement with Violence. Uh, the fourth item is authorizing submittal of a grant. This is uh, for an amount that could go up to $1.3 million over three years to expand mental health support services through our school-based clinics. And the fifth item is passage of a resolution establishing a framework for the clean energy funding for Minneapolis related to the utility franchise fee increase, which is also on the Ways and Means Committee. And I will move all five items forward for approval. Thank you, Councilmember Gordon. Does anyone want to pull anything off? Any discussion? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are 10 ayes. Thank you. Next is the Intergovernmental Relations Committee report, and I have asked Committee Member, uh, Council Member Andrew Johnson to give that uh, report. Thank you, Madam Chair. We've got four items on the report. The first is authorizing comments related to a Crown Hydro grant. The second is an amendment to the city's federal legislative agenda related to the federal tax code reform. The third is a passage of an ordinance opposing uh, the conceal and carry reciprocity laws. And the fourth is uh, an amendment to our legislative policies position related to the family partnership headquarters. And I'll go ahead and move the full report. Thank you, Councilmember Johnson. Anyone want to pull anything off? Comment? Seeing none, the, the clerk will call the roll, please. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are 10 ayes. 
Thank you. Next, we have the Public Safety, Civil Rights, and Emergency Management Report with uh, that committee's chair, Councilmember Yang. Thank you, Madam President or Madam Vice President. Um, today, we have 10 items for approval. The first item is a contract amendment with Trans Languages LLC. Second item is a grant uh, from the Minnesota Homeland Security Emergency Management the bomb um, disposal unit. Uh, third item is a joint powers agreement for participation in the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension Human Trafficking Investigators Task Force. Fourth item is contract amendment with Foresight Consulting Services. Fifth item are appointments to the Police Conduct Oversight Commission. Uh, sixth item, uh, appointments to the Minneapolis Commission on Civil Rights. Seventh item, uh, amendments to Police Conduct Oversight Ordinance. Eighth item is unmanned aircraft ordinance. Ninth item, um, staff directions regarding the appointments of police conduct oversight and the Minneapolis Commission on Civil Rights. And then tenth item are uh, civil rights ordinance. And I will actually pull items number five, seven, and ten, okay. and um, move the remainder as consent items. All right, thank you. Um, so, uh, Councilmember Yang has moved items one through four, six, eight, and nine. Uh, any discussion on those items? Councilmember Palmasano, I think you're on the other items. Okay. Correct. Uh, so not seeing any further discussion on those, the clerk will call the roll on those items. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are 10 ayes. So we'll go back one by one, and I think there are some folks who might uh, want some amendments, but I'll turn to Council Member Yang because he still has the floor. Uh, item number five. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice President. Uh, the first item is item number five and item number seven, and um, I think both of these, um, in some ways, um, the amendments are going to require us to address item number seven before item number five, but okay. um, I will pass it on to Council Member Palmasano. Why don't you, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and move item number seven then, and then we'll see if, uh, what the amendment is there, and then we'll just make sure we take them one by one. Okay, sure. Um, I will I will move item uh, number seven with the amendments as... Um, and then I'll turn to her for that. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. Sounds... Thank you for moving that so it's in front of us. Council Member Palmasano. Um, thank you, Madam Vice President. Um, the first... Item is item number seven. This reflects, um, I had a lot of comments about this ordinance and the way that this became, these changes came to the ordinance that I already gave at public safety, but this reflects some additional changes that were received at the public hearing. Um, and one of the things that we received from members of the public at the public hearing was that perhaps the Police Conduct Oversight Commission should operate more like our other civil boards and commissions and that they elect their own chair. Um, in conversation with civil rights, in conversations with police, and in conversations with Mayor-elect Fry, um, everybody was amenable to this change. And so I, I welcome the opportunity to bring this forward. This needs to precede the change in item five because what we are doing in item number five, just to be clear, is it used to be that we, the mayor appointed the chair of the commission and now we are just appoint, reappointing the person, but knowing that the commission would elect their own chair. So this is just one more way that we can really give to the public things that we have, the, the framework with improvements that we have for the Police Conduct Oversight Commission in our city. So um, thank you. The item before you it says corrected copy on the top right. There were some grammatical changes we needed to make last minute, and that's the reason you have multiple papers in front of you. So on... Uh, Councilmember Palmasano's amendment to item number seven. Any discussion on that amendment? Seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That amendment is incorporated. And then on item number seven itself, any discussion on item number seven? Seeing none, uh, clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are nine ayes. Uh, Councilor Yang. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice President. Um, the change with regards to item number five, um, I will, um, I guess, share the floor with Councilmember Palmasano and let her make that um, change. But I will, I will move the item um, 
as amended uh, with Council Member Palmasano's uh, changes. Okay. So, Council Member Palmasano? Madam Vice President, this is what I had mentioned before that this simply appoints the people but doesn't point to who the chair will be going forward. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, Councilmember Yang has moved this uh, amended item um, or slightly changed item. Discussion on this? Seeing none. The, oh, I'm sorry, Councilmember Yang. And thank you, uh, Madam Vice President. Uh, with regards to this change, uh, it's merely cler clerical, if anything. Um, the changes that happened in item number seven uh, needed to be reflected in item number five. And so that's why um, I had suggested that to Council Member Palmasano as well that you know, if we're going to write it into um, our ordinance and we have to you know, make those changes so that it's consistent. And so merely clerical, if anything, um, doesn't say anything about uh, the current chair at this point, Andrea Brown. It's more so just clerical. Thank you. Um, not seeing any further comment on this, so the clerk will call the roll. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are nine ayes. Councilmember Yang, Thank you, Madam Vice President. Um, with regards to item number 10, um, you know, council members will have in front of them a motion by council member Glidden, and since she's chairing, she's asked me to uh, make this uh, motion. So I, I'm going to move to make uh, this motion to amend um, section 139.50 of the ordinance. And, you know, if you look at all this stuff, I mean, it looks like a lot of reading, but the only changes are actually the bolded uh, changes in the, I guess, second paragraph there. And this is with regards to the prevailing wages um, section within the Civil Rights Ordinance. And there were some concerns with regards to um, maybe this uh, change in the ordinance is a big dramatic change with regards to the prevailing wages section, but uh, with regards to this, this was just uh, some technical language that just, um, makes it better, I think. And so uh, with that, um, I will move this item and Council, uh, Council Vice President Clinton, if you want to speak on that, feel free. Thank you. So I think on the, so he's moved the underlying item. Do I have to separately vote on that? Can I just move the whole thing? Okay. Um, and, and I'll just make a comment. Thank you, Council Member Yang. I think this is just in some ways almost a technical amendment to clarify that there is no impact on prevailing uh, wage, which is covered under a second, separate section of our, of our <coughs> code of ordinances. Uh, any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are nine ayes. Right. Next, we have the Transportation and Public Works uh, report with Councilmember Wright. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice President. The committee forwards 22 items today for full consideration by the Council. Uh, item one is a uh, reconstruction project at Broadway Street Northeast. Item two is the redesign of Nicket Mall Ordinance, making clarifications for that uh, guidance document. Item three is a uh, uh, construction project at Lindale Avenue in Nicollet uh, at 61st Street West. Uh, item four is a reconstruction project at Tampa Avenue South from Lake to 36. Um, item five is a contract with Control Incorporated for uh, systems at the Fridley Filtration Plant. Item six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11 are all contract uh, approvals and, uh, and amendments for work of the committee or of the department. Item 12 is the Memorandum of Understanding with MnDOT. Uh, for access to traffic video. Item 13 is the 10th Avenue South Mississippi Bridge Engineering Consultant Services. Item 14 is the Penn Avenue Construction Project, Sea Line Bus Rapid Transit, cooperative agreement with Hennepin County. Item 15 is agreement with Hennepin County for traffic signal improvements. Item 16 is the 4th Street Reconstruction Project from 2nd to 4th Avenue South. Item 17 is the 18th Avenue Northeast Trail Gap. Uh, that corrects the gap in that bike trail. Item 18 is a Nicollet Mall policy, um, adopting that policy to assign unique regulations for various areas of our new mall. Uh, item 19 is the Access Minneapolis Citywide Action Plan, amendment to include historic streets as a street design type. Item 20 is the Capital Projects Closeouts and Appropriations of Revenue Adjustments. And item 21 is the bid for revised signal systems for pedestrian curb ramp improvements. And number 22 was the zero waste plan adoption and development of a three year implementation plan as that good work continues. Um, I will stand for any questions, uh, but I will move all items as submitted. 
All right, Councilmember Reich has moved all items. Any discussion on any of these items? Um, seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are nine ayes. Next, we have the Ways and Means uh, report with Councilmember Quincy. Uh, thank you, Council uh, Chair. Um, Ways and Means brings forward 31 items for approval today. The first two items are reflecting uh, amendments in our ordinances <clears throat> related to gas uh, franchise fees and electricity uh, franchise fee. Um, there's next six items are a variety of uh, legal settlements. Um, we also have a contract amendment with uh, NAC Mechanical and Electric Services for change orders regarding domestic water supply. We also have a contract amendment with ICE Builders, purchase of a high-speed uh, small format scanner for the Document Solution Center. Item number 10 is an appro appropriation approval and loan application for Minnesota Public Facilities Authority for Fridley Filter Water Rehab Plant. Item number 11 is the annual property insurance premium for the Convention Center, Talmadge Building, and Parking Deck. Uh, item 12 is a contract amendment with Springstead to perform federal rebate calculations for bond issues, uh, city common bond. Item 13 is a series of master contracts with 10 firms for the short-term investment providers. Item number 14 is the city investment policy. Uh, this is a review and update, rearranging the uh, uh, or do it, making some changes to the investment policy. Item number 15 is a contract amendment with investment management agreement, contract with Arite Consulting for solid waste information management system service and, and service now module implementations. Item 17 is a gift acceptance for travel for SharePoint Fest in December of 2017. We also have a contract with Twitter for data procurement. Item uh, 19 is a grant from the United States Department of Justice Community Oriented Policing Services. This is the COPS grant for these uh, sworn 10 officers. Item number 20 is the uh, contract amendments with Hennepin County uh, Department of Community Corrections for Probation Officer Services. 21 is the appointment of uh, Ward 6 representative to CLIC. Item 22 is a grant from Minnesota Department of Health for Lead Awareness and Healthy Homes Campaign. Item 13 is an application to the Minnesota Department of Health for Home Visiting Grant Program. We also have an amendment to the City of Minneapolis Miniflex Plan. Um, item number 25 is a uh, authorizing the use of the Minneapolis Participatory Budgeting Playbook for projects and programs that would benefit uh, use of participatory budgeting process going forward. And 26 is a bid for Carlton Companies for a parking ramp demolition project. 27 is a contract with Technology Management Corporation. Item number 28 is a request by Officer uh, Michael Griffin for reimbursement for criminal defense fees. This was forwarded without recommendation, and I'm going to be, as part of this report, uh, re requesting postponement of this item for one week uh, to the uh, next uh, council meeting on the 15th. We also have uh, a legal settlement. Oh, we've covered that, I think, items 29 and 30. And the final item is a joint powers agreement uh, with the state of Minnesota for electrical work and related costs. So I'd like to move all 30 items for approval and then one item for postponement. All right, Council Member Quincy has moved all uh, items, including the one that with the direction <coughs> to postpone for one cycle. Are there any comments on this agenda or anyone want to take anything off not seeing anyone I do have a comment that I wanted to make it is on item number 25 the participatory budgeting staff direction um, with so many major things on this agenda you might think why is she making a comment on this particular one? I mean, this really is an agenda with just some meaty, meaty things. And I think I just wanted to call this out for my for my colleagues. Um, this is one of the many items that honestly is really teed up for decisions that need to be made uh, in the future. And I wanted to call it out for that purpose. Um, participatory budgeting is... Um, 
It is uh, a process where you use a more democratic um, engagement of the public to make decisions about how you uh, uh, spend money uh, for the city. And uh, I took a trip to Brazil a, a few years ago as part of a fellowship trip I had, and I got an opportunity to, to visit the region where this is uh, really uh, was pioneered, uh, which is in uh, Porto Alegre um, uh, uh, region of uh, Brazil. And um, there, I will say, what was kind of interesting to me is that uh, one of the cities that I visited that had the most success in using this methodology was one that had really incorporated not just a participatory budgeting methodology, but used what I would call participatory uh, de democracy kind of uh, methodologies in a number of things that they did. So they really had tried to foster um, a different way of how government engaged with residents for a lot of the functions of government with the underlying intent of increasing trust and participation in government. Um, so it is a, it's a different theory um, of how to do some, some government processes. Um, I personally am a, am a big fan of this, but you know what, I'm not gonna be here next year. So it really depends on uh, uh, having staff that may uh, understand the methodology and being willing to implement it, but at the end of the day, the policymakers need to embrace that this is a methodology that uh, we want to, to, in, to engage. I wanna thank uh, Lori Johnson and uh, really many other staff people, but I will say the finance department, we were kind of kidding in the, in the Ways and Means Committee about um, how broad ranging a lot of the things that our finance department uh, has been doing and does do uh, are, and this is another example of uh, thinking just creatively about how process can impact result and that it's not just uh, having good principles of um, accounting or, or budgeting or things like this, financial policies, it's also a bit about the process of how you get there is important as well. So thank you uh, to finance staff and particularly Lori Johnson who took on kind of a an odd task, I think, very soon after she arrived at the city. So I'm not seeing any other comments on this or anything else on the Ways and Means agenda, so the clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are nine ayes. Next we have the zoning and planning report with Councilmember uh, Bender, the chair of that committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. We have six items from zoning and planning. Item number one is denying the local historic landmark designation of the Messiah Evangelical Lutheran Church. Item number two is approving a number of appointments for volunteers to our Minneapolis Arts Commission. I'm very thankful for the work of all of our uh, commission members, including these. Item number three is denying an application for a rezoning at 1120 West Broadway that would have allowed for a shopping center. Item number four is approving an application for a utility easement on the block, uh, which is at 51st Avenue North um, between Girard and Humboldt Avenue North. Item number five is approving the small area plan for the Van White Memorial Boulevard station. And it includes a staff direction that was brought by Council President Johnson and Council Member Yang to work with the neighborhood organization to incorporate concerns about affordable housing into the comprehensive plan, which we will be taking up next year and continue to work with them about this general uh, issue of housing affordability and displacement in the community. And item number six is passage of an ordinance amending our zoning code related to pet boarding. And I'll move items one through six. All right, thank you. Um, any comments? Anyone want to take anything off? Not seeing anything, the clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. No one, number one, aye on the remaining. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are nine ayes on the report except for item number one, which has eight ayes and one nay. 
We have uh, one item of unfinished business, I believe. Um, it says this is a street vacation. Uh, Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board, 3500 Cedar Lake Avenue. It's a passage of a resolution vacating an unpaved portion of Cedar Lake Avenue. It requires nine votes. Uh, and I will ask if anyone has any comment on that or discussion. Not, Council Member Goodman. I'm not sure why this was postponed. Madam, Madam Vice President, I was trying to get in queue. My apologies. This is one of the items at the last meeting of the City Council that required a two-thirds nine-member vote, and we didn't have nine members at that time. Unfortunately, okay. so we're just cleaning up old business. All right. Clerical error. So uh, with that, any further comment? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Gang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are nine ayes. Next, we have a report of a special committee, the executive committee, and I will ask if uh, our minority leader, Councilmember Gordon, might give that report. Thank you very much. Appreciate the designation of my esteemed <laughs> title. Um, the uh, executive committee. I don't always get to use it. I know. You know, so I don't. <laughs> um, the executive committee met and uh, discussed and is moving forward six items. Uh, most of them have to do with appointed positions in the Human Resource Department. Uh, that's item number one and item number two. Um, item number three is an uh, appointed position in the Finance and Property Service Department. Um, this is, we for these we adopt uh, findings and uh, approve the new appointed position. Um, the fourth item is appointed positions in the Police Department. Um, this is kind of bringing up to date our uh, policies and approvals with some current practices that I believe have been going on, approving appointed positions of police commander, um, uh, various um, divisions. Um, the fifth is um, is approving a security policy for um, city security um, facilities or for securing city facilities. This is actually a policy that's been in place for a while, and we are approving it before the end of the term. And the last item is approving a collective bargaining agreement with the Minnesota Public Employees Association. And I'm happy to uh, answer any questions if people have them about those items, but we'll move all of them forward on behalf of the executive committee as your esteemed minority leader. Thank you, Councilmember Gordon, and I'll just say I understand that these are referrals to the Committee of the Whole, which will take place next Wednesday, the 13th. So the clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Vice <coughs> President Glidden. Aye. There are nine ayes. Um, Next, we have uh, the two resolutions, and I always forget, can I just call for a vote on this, or do you need a roll call? Okay, no, all right. So uh, the first is our health department's 150th honorary resolution. Uh, discussion on that? All in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? And next is our honorary resolution for uh, Jane Miller for her service to the Minneapolis Park and Recreation District. Discussion on that? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, next we have announcements, and so I will ask if there are any announcements. You know, I'm, I'm going to make a comment. Um, so, uh, we learned yesterday, um, that, uh, our, Senator for the state of Minnesota, um, Al Franken, has announced that he will be uh, stepping down from his seat. I am sure that we will have other opportunities to more formally recognize him. But I just wanted to say a personal thank you to Senator Franken. Um, you know, and there are many things I know that people can call out about. Um, things that he championed and things that he did, but I wanted to just call out that he really was a champion of the consumer and uh, 
maybe I'll just leave it at that, kind of the, the little, the little people say kind of the little people, but I think by that we mean this, every, all of us, you know, the everyday person. And there are not many people in positions of political power who have staked out um, championing the rights of consumers um, and uh, in a way that he did. And so um, his advocacy will be missed and I just wanted to give a sincere thank you to him. Any other announcements? I'm not seeing any, so with that, we are adjourned.